Today, you're going to learn how to make an ammo counter inside of DaVinci Resolve. So the very first thing that we're going to do is figure out where we want to place this ammo counter. Because I put the Phantom away uh, right here, I don't need to track anything afterwards. So I'm going to make a cut right here. Anyways, we're going to convert this clip into a fusion clip because it was recorded in 120 FPS and the timeline's in 24 FPS. So there's no sense to track every single one of those frames. We just need to track... Um, you do the math. Anyways, right click, uh, new fusion clip, go on into fusion. Here we go. We got to track uh, the, the phantom. So to do that, we're going to hit shift space and type in planar tracker. From here, what we can do is just outline the phantom. It doesn't have to be perfect. And I would suggest it not to be perfect. Just something kind of loosey goosey like this. Before you start tracking, there's a few settings that we have to change. First of all, our reference time, we have to set that to the frame that we want to start tracking on and that is frame 17 so just hit set and then uh tracker we're gonna change that to hybrid point slash area and then in options you could bring down your trail length to about two or three this gets rid of any bad tracking points now one thing to keep in mind you want to avoid the ui because that does not move so that will mess up your tracking data now that you have all the settings changed you can track forwards and backwards uh if you started in the middle of the video like i did oh Oh, perfect the video stopped and that's because um we're on frame 55 frame 56 the phantom disappears so to go back to our reference frame we could um you know place our playhead there or we could just hit go snaps back there and then track backwards now that we have all this tracking data it's good to just kind of scrub through a little bit and make sure this outline sticks to uh the phantom and it doesn't really warp or move around too much and this is looking pretty good right now it doesn't really uh slip or anything so we are good to go now technically you could do everything inside of the planar tracker but i don't like doing that because if you switch this to corner pin you're limited to where you put these corner pins we can't go outside of this box so instead i like to just kind of extract everything at the bottom of your planar tracker you'll see create planar transform if you click that a new node appears oh hey it's a planar transform so this node right here is all of your tracking data it can't do anything other than apply tracking but that's okay because we're gonna add a few other nodes first of all we don't need the planar tracker anymore so we're gonna delete that and then we're gonna add in a merge node we can connect the output of our planar transform to that merge and above the planar transform we're going to add a text plus node we can connect the output to the gold arrow of the planar transform and in between these two nodes we're going to hit shift space and add in a corner positioner so let's add some text here text and then we're going to move this corner positioner pro tip try to line up uh the corners with straight lines on whatever skin you're using so that way everything stays nice and square unfortunately we can't use these uh top corner pins on the phantom but that's okay we just got to get it relatively close to uh this bottom line and you know just make the perspective look kind of right okay let's just double check and make sure that the text still stays on the phantom all right so you probably don't want your text in this exact position and i guess you could move around the corner positioner but why do that we could go into the text node and then use layout or just click these arrows and move it around wherever we want and like i said earlier we're not limited to where this corner positioner is i technically could put it way over here and it's outside of this box moving on so i'm gonna start off by changing the font here finding something that i like i usually like bog bog I I don't know how to pronounce it i edit videos let's also figure out where i start uh there we go this frame right here i take the first shot so this is the frame that i'm going to start on now what we could do is you know type in ammo uh, 30 and then we add a keyframe and then we move over and then we keyframe this and that's not like a, a big deal especially because there's not a whole lot of shots here but that would be kind of a pain to do if we right click our text you'll see text timer and oh look at that modifiers highlighted let's go on over there you can 
can see, we, can, we, we got a countdown thing that we can do. And we're going to use that to our advantage. So I'm going to uncheck hours, minutes, only leave seconds. But I'm also going to turn minutes down to zero. Now I'm going to bring my seconds up to 30, add a keyframe, and then move all the way over until I stop firing. And then bring my seconds down to 21 not zero and check it out if we play this back it moves down sort of with it uh, it's a little off but like you know like what, frame 24 or shot 24 it's still there and that's 23 but no one's gonna notice that if you really wanted you could add a keyframe here and make this 20 uh 23 but why now I know what you're saying. This is cool and all, but we're still missing ammo. It's just a bunch of numbers. Well, what we could do is copy this text node and then connect it to the output here. We got a merge and uh, we're going to get rid of that modifier. So we're just going to right click, remove text timer, and we're going to type in ammo. Now this is when things can get a little tricky because if we move, let's just say the ammo, uh, the counter doesn't move with it. Or if we change the size, that also doesn't move with it. So to fix that, we need to link up both size settings. To do that, we're going to pin both of them and then we can open them. See, they're, they're both open. So all we have to do is uh, double click the size and hit equal, then enter. Now we get this uh, little expression thingy. We can take this plus scroll down and connect it to the other size. And now it's linked to just one size control, which means we can scale this down, move the ammo over and then move the counter over. We could get even fancier. And after this merge two, we can add a transform node. And now we can use this transform to move everything around at once. I suppose you could also uh, scale it up here, but you also lose a little bit of detail. Anyways, I'm gonna unpin that, uh, uh, close stuff. And now it's just time for compositing everything. So after uh, the planar transform, we can add, um, you know, like a, a, a soft glow. So we're gonna hit shift space, soft glow, and um, you know, just do this, a little bit of that. Uh, we could also add a color corrector node after that and then pick the glow color this way. Or if you wanna get real fancy, you could add the Spider-Verse effect that I just made. Anyways, the last thing that we need to do is just keyframe this out. And because uh, the tracking stops right here, um, we just have to add a blend keyframe. We move one frame over, Phantom disappears, and then we just bring the blend all the way down to zero. Anyways, that's how to make the ammo counter. If you want the Spider-Verse effect, uh, it's in the Discord. I gotta go, goodbye.